this is James's first animal podcast. This will be a series. Uh, you're doing five a week, seven a week, what seven a week, seven a week. To do every day. Okay, so see how that goes. one a day. Uh, these and where are these? How are you coming up with these animals? So I have a very large collection of like plushies and toys of real prehistoric and fictional creatures that I've been collecting over the years and uh I think last year I started putting them up on shelves and logging them and stuff like that and I've wanted to start using them for educational purposes because I mean it would be kind of weird just to have them all up on a shelf and just sitting there so I'm like well I can I was like maybe YouTube maybe something but then I figured out I could just do Facebook posts because I had a Facebook account that I never used for anything and dad has the company account that I can also put them on and then I was like, okay, well, we can do that. And Dad wants me to do podcasts, so we can do that too. And, and I know a lot of people have been asking me about uh, – you, you share a lot of your animal knowledge just in general when we're with people. And several of them have said, oh, mm-hmm. you should do a podcast or video series or something on that. So I know that they've been telling me that you should do that, and I know they've been telling you. So, yeah. so this seems like a good way. So, so a- as we talk about each animal, I'll put the, the picture of the animal up. Uh, so yeah. that so that everybody can kind of see. Now, are you choosing are, in any particular order, or are you just kind of so, picking one? There's we're not. First of all, the daily thing and the order is not exact. It's gonna, but will kind of be whatever I feel like. But I am trying to do an order. So the first week was I went through my favorite animals, but it was like I went through I went from to birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish. And then I did a fictional creature at the end. And then the next week was shock week. So that week was just all shocks. Even though I made sure they were all from different, like, sub-habitats at least. Like, well, f- I have them organized like that. But in reality, like, one was, like, from a coral reef and one's, like, from the ocean, you know, stuff like that. And then this last week had been kind of things that aren't as they seem. And I did miss Sunday, but, you know, oh, well. That I think I the third I lo- I I mean I enjoy all of them but I yeah. the third week was really cool for me I, I probably because most of the animals yeah. in week one and two you had you had taught me things about previously so I did learn some new things yeah. with each post but I thought the third week I really learned some cool things because yeah. there were things that I assumed uh, that that you know then I got straightened yeah. out on so and to as speak, we're so. recording this the last one for this week <laughs> hasn't been made yet I was going to do that at some point when I got home. Usually, for some reason, I end up doing them like 10 o'clock at night, which is probably not normal, but oh well. <laughs> so what we'll do is we're going we're gonna to get caught up. We're going to go through the ones that yeah. have been posted so far. So this is the first three weeks minus the last one of the third week. <clears throat> okay. As that one does not exist at this moment. And the, the first one now, so, so first of all, let's just say, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up on the screen this, this picture. Yes. We're not going to say what it is yet. Okay. Yeah. We're going to put up on the screen. And... Um, Without giving away what this one is, yeah, um, I th- I think I could guess why this was your first animal of all the animals. Yeah. But I would like to set some <coughs> things. So first okay. of all, these are figures I have collected, or plushies, or whatever. So all of them aren't going to be a hundred percent accurate, as the, either the manufacturer just made like a generic toy and didn't actually assign it anything, or I was like, this actually more looks like that. Or maybe it's just like an older model that they just didn't have the resources at the time to make accurate. So just know because these are in my collections, I'm using the ones I have. But if you after you hear about the creatures, you can go look up real photographs of them. And we can even try and find yeah. real photographs to include, yeah. um, you know, at the end, uh, because some of these will be. Like you said, just stuffed animals. So this first one is a little like it's a very old plushie, so it's not exactly yeah. up to par with the real thing. So we will try and find also a, a an, an accurate yeah. image for at some point through here. Yeah. So, so that's just a clarification on that. Um. So the f- and, and and I think in this particular blog you do you do right away. Say Every what blog it is. I do discuss it because as I've done this, I've kind of learned like certain brands are good. So, you know, I'm not – I wouldn't call myself an expert. There are definitely people out there who, like, reviewing figures is literally their job. I even watch some of them. But, like, I know enough where I can put in my two cents. And so. maybe that's something we can uh, – at the end of each blog. Uh, I know. Can... I put it in the blog. I already have been doing that. 
I oh, no, I'm saying other resources of where to find out more information oh, about yeah. the animal we could include. Uh -huh. So we could put that yeah. just in the description. Yeah. Here are some good resources for birds or yeah. mammals or that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And so. one thing I liked, though, is in general, I would definitely double check it. Wikipedia, for specifically animal stuff, is actually not that bad because – no one really goes out of their way to change the random information on that. And especially prehistoric creatures, the only people making those fake Wikipedia pages are probably the people who found them or someone really into it. And a lot of them, especially for lesser-known creatures, are just, this thing was found here. It's literally a stub. Like, Wikipedia calls it a stub. So... So um, it's, so we don't we aren't going to call Wikipedia the end all be all resource. Yeah. But in in this particular arena about animals, and, it's generally at least yes, a good starting point yes. and has some decent it's, information. It's not like yeah. it's not as bad. Yeah. I mean, don't do it in your research paper because your teachers will get mad at you for yeah. some reason. But but you could use that as a launching off point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this first one um, is obviously a feathered friend of some sort yeah. um so so tell us about this one and then i may have some okay. questions as we go so along do here. you want me to keep its name secret till the end or? well i, I kind of how you i think the i think i'm thinking of the third week yes that's so, the third because yes. this first week's just like my favorite so, okay. which is also why we even why this is why my dad thinks i'd obviously <laughs> talk about this one because it's my favorite bird which is also why i kind of started out with it so first of all this is a frugivore now, what does that mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming just that they only eat fruit. Well, not only. Primarily eat primarily fruit. Primarily fruit. I think it's like 70% of their diet or something is that. Then they get cold. And, it, and is that a thing? So so a, a frugivore, a pescivore, a, a, yeah. an herbivore. Uh, like it's not that they are that they can't eat yes. the other things. They're just more designed yeah. and prefer yeah. their thing. It's very common. Um, a good example that's come up very recently is that horses and cows will eat baby chicks if they find them. They don't primarily eat meat, but if there's a free little source of protein right there that's going to basically be no effort to eat, they're going to do it. And is that pretty typical across the animal kingdom? Yes. I know one channel that I watch had a like a 15-minute video of herbivores eating meat, and then a 14-minute video of carnivores eating plants. So yeah. it's pretty common. I mean, it's not what it's not necessarily all the time. Like right. it's gonna be every once in a while. It'd be out of a particular need. Yeah. They can't find food or, or something. Or like a big or... thing in the Amazon, for example, which is actually kind of where these birds live, which is interesting. But mm -hmm. um, for example, like spider monkeys and stuff will eat clay because the fruits they eat are poisonous, and they found out that the clay will kind of cancel out the poison. Oh, so okay. they will go out of their way, even if, especially for spider monkeys who live their whole lives in the trees, going to the ground is very dangerous. But they will do it to eat this clay. So, so kind of can... like a, uh, like you use um, coal or carbon as yeah. a filter for something. Something yeah. in the clay filters out and yeah. the, the toxins. Oh, that's kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, and, and uh, uh, this is just a, it has nothing to do with m modern animals, but the, the uh, the dinosaurs. Are, I don't know if there are, are there any modern animals that eat. Um, we have stones I've, to grind things up. Literally, eight little I stones. I think maybe I don't know, but sauropods are famous for like swallowing stones as it helps grind up food in their stomach. Yeah, I can't think of an animal off the top of my head. I guess that does like that, but... like cows evolved to have multiple stomachs yes, to take care of. But of sauropods, that like Brachiosaurus, for example, like uh, certain species have been found to swallow stones called gastrolifts. Mm -hmm. they, that's what they get called when they swallow them. Well, so, yeah. and that, and that, so a cow's stomach kind of does the same thing, but yeah. without swallowing well, stone, realize the food cows goes through three processes. Eat food swallow it, digest it a bit, then puke it back up, kind of, and chew it again, and then swallow it again. Into another stomach, though, don't they? Yeah, in another, yeah. So into it, another stomach. Another process, yeah. But they, it goes back up to the mouth. and they, That's why when you hear about cows chewing cud, yeah. it's because they chew the same food multiple times. Over and over. And they have yeah. three stomachs. I think Two, four? three, four. I oh. think it's four. Well, I guess we're a little off. To, we're, I'm sorry. I got on a thing yeah. about cows and stomachs. I'm not uh, a cow <laughs> expert, so... <laughs> So anyway, this particular bird. So yes. tell us about this. It this eats fruits. Bird. Okay. But it lives in very high mountains in the Guanine Shield, and some of these will be like giant sheer cliffs, just completely flat tops. Okay. Now, like, like, like thousands of feet tall. Okay, so already I have a question. Yeah. They eat fruit. 
but they're in really high mountains on cliffs with flat tops, which would seem to not be a conducive environment well, to really, growing fruit. This is the Amazon <laughs> rainforest. Oh, okay. So, so even at the top of the mountain, it's warm. Yes. And 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 wet. And, and also, these okay. are birds. They could fly down. Well, it's okay. Yeah. And those are the extreme. There's a lot of just mountainous forests, but there's okay. like every once in a while you run into one of these like really big, like Angel's okay. Fall, which is like the world's tallest waterfall, is found in the terrain like this up in northern South America. So, so. do they live in like little caves in the side of the cliff? or ledges i think not so. in trees i guess if they're up that i don't mean, actually know for sure if they make nests of twigs yeah. or anything so that would be something to kind of look into yeah how, how i mean at brakefield and... zoo there is another subspecies of this specific bird they have mm -hmm. and it they will both nest on the they will both sit on the fake rocks and okay. in the trees okay so. but they're comfortable on rock well yeah and isn't the nest at Brookfield Zoo, up on like oh, yeah, a fake a rock flat, cliff. Yeah, it's actually no, it's actually just on like a random platform in like the hall. Okay. So, oh yeah, so like yeah. But, but like rocky cliff. There's no. Yeah. They're actually away from the trees yeah, and the so vegetation probably, when they Yeah, probably nest. yeah cliff nesters. And that Could that sense. have anything to do with predation? That they're. Yeah, I mean, barely anything's gonna be able to get you up there. Yeah, that's a, just another bird. That's why basically. birds make nests in trees in general. Yeah. And cliffs are just a further step up. Okay. All right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Content I, I'm, I'm going to keep yeah. interrupting, so just keep going. <laughs> um, so, yes, they – and that's called the – so the area they live specifically is called the Guanian Shield. Okay. Which is just what the area is called. I believe one of the countries is called French Guan or Guinea. I don't – I can't pronounce things. But okay. <laughs> it's, so if you in, were in Spanish class, you learned about most of the main countries. And then there's Brazil, which is Portuguese, so it's not – there's then, like, four small countries right up above Brazil that, like, you don't know what they're called. One of those is French Guan. <laughs> and that's the Guanian Shield. That's where you find these guys. And you said French. Was it, like, ruled by the French? Is it still run by the French? I think it? one of them might be a French colony. French colony? Or okay. it, it definitely was a French colony. colony. I don't know if it still is. Okay. Now, but, yeah. Okay. And so, so what is it that you like? Why is this your favorite bird? Well... So first of all, this is the only plush I could find. So it's the other subspecies than the one that I've actually encountered. Uh, okay. Now, at Brickfield Zoo, they have the subspecies that I don't have a plush of. Okay. And that one is the Andean subspecies because it lives in Andean mountains, which is the big mountain range in South America. So they, they both live in mountains, and they're both very similar, but they're slightly different. Okay. But anyway, that one, I've got to feed them before. I was doing, like, a behind-the-scenes, and I got to hold out a blueberry tray, and one of them came down. And that, that, that connected me with them. And another time, the first time I ever heard of it, I just found it in a book. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is such a cool bird. Now, I think this is the point where I have to reveal the name for things that keep making sense. This yeah. is the Guanian Cock of the Rock. Yes, yes. And the ones at Brickfield Zoo are the Andean Cocks of the Rock. Cocks of the Rock. Okay. So then I was like, yo, guys, look, I found this cool bird called the Cock of the Rock. I'm like, look, it's name rhymes <laughs> and it's a orange which is rare in the animal kingdom and then they're like do you know what cock means <laughs> and i learned that day what cock meant and i got very sad because i thought it was just the word for well birds. but also well yeah i mean it's that's a, what a it's, male yeah rooster or, yeah that's what i mean a male chicken yeah, yeah but they taught me the other meaning i got very sad yeah but anyway yeah so this is the guanian cock of the rock the one thing I don't like about it, this plush in particular, is that it's crest. In real life, their crests are very stiff and has a very – the Guanian specifically has a black rim to it while the Andean doesn't. And that's the main way I tell them apart. So – but, I mean, this is a really old plush that, like, I had to find on eBay. So, I mean, and it, it, it's yeah, they're, fine. Yeah, they're, like, they're, their crests almost look like just a solid – like a ridge on a – the the dinosaur that you you push the at the museum parasaur like that, a crest that's, that's like different. that different well but i mean the shape also, it's kind of that's you know. that's the next thing we're talking about oh well there you go see but, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm i'm jumping ahead it's foreshadowing but, people foreshadowing. But before we get there <laughs> the last thing i want to talk about is so the males are bright orange yeah but the ones i yeah. fed the one i fed at brickfield was brown why mm -hmm. is that well the males are orange and the females are brown Right. This is very common in birds. The male will be brightly colored to display, and the female will be a darker color to camouflage. Yeah. So 
and the, the females still tend to have the crest, but mm-hmm. it might be slightly less prominent. I don't know. And are there any particular, I mean, other than you thought they were cool looking, and are there any particular other interesting facts about the, this particular bird that really caught I mean, your attention? I listen to them. They're, they're a bright color. They're right. not common. They live off in the mountains. Um, they're un, Like, orange is just a unique color in general. Mm-hmm. Their name rhymes. I like that it rhymes. <laughs> the little yeah. alliteration never mm-hmm. hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and it says on here that um, the Brickfield they, they, Zoo encounter they make the um, a call when when squeezed. Oh, uh, this plush makes a call when squeezed. Okay. It's specifically a Wild Republic. I guess that's why I figured you wouldn't squeeze yeah. the real bird. No, but no. <laughs> yeah, the plush. Yeah, Wild Republic makes a whole series of these. They have newer ones which are a lot better mm-hmm. because it's like the pattern just on the bird instead of like being stitched separately, so they can get more detailed. In a smaller space, and do they do they all do you know if they all kind of make the same call or in different? Well, they all make species a, within each the species, species makes a different call, slightly different call, a high pitched or low or it depends on the bird. Oh, so they're all kind of different. All birds the, make all different calls. Oh no no, the, the cocks of the rocks oh, from the Andean to I, the I and don't know. The I don't. The, the Guanians tend to have like are I want to say sharper. They have like more okay. like. Like focused edges as the black rim on the crest. Okay. The males for the guanian also have little yellow strings off their wings. Okay. Well, the male andean is just orange and black. Okay. Okay. And maybe some white, okay. and has a very like, like it's still a solid crest, but it frays off at the at the mm. top. Okay. And the female is just a brown male. Okay. Like, I think the guanian there might be some more differences in the genders, but like a female andean is just brown. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that's very cool. So, uh, Cox of the Rocks, if, if you go, you said at Brookfield Zoo. They have Andean Cox of the Rocks. They have Andean Cox of the There's Rocks. There's also some at the Bronx Zoo. Those, oh, are, the, nice. those are the two I, places that I know have them. Okay. So. And uh, you may uh, catch James occasionally behind the scenes. Every once in a while, he does the behind the scenes because yeah. he loves the birds at Brookfield Zoo yeah. and uh, has like been there a couple times. Uh, so, you may, may see if you see a very handsome, very tall. I don't like it. Okay, that, young man in, in red glasses. I'm like barely. I'm really short, actually. Not in our house. <laughs> in, oh, our house. Okay. in our house, you're very tall. Yes, in my, yeah. <laughs> okay, so all right, so that kind of wraps up the first one. Talk to the rock.